The question is simple. Okay, Fez, what do you want to know? What rights do LGBTQ plus people don't have that me that I have. First off there, Borat, I'm assuming you have the right to use the bathroom of which gender you identify with in all 50 states. A right not shared by trans people in Alabama, Arkansas, Tennessee, Idaho, and Oklahoma. Or ooh, if you could find a woman to tolerate, you know, all of you and your atrocious run-on sentences. See, this video was like if a nine paragraph talk to text text message was a person. Watching it the first time made me feel like I was having a fucking stroke. I edited out two whole minutes and didn't lose a single bigoted point you were trying to make. But anyway, if you could find a woman who could always feel like she's having a stroke and marry you, and then you wanted to get a job at a Florida school, you'd have the right to talk about your spouse at school. A right your LGBTQ coworkers would not share. So yeah, they wouldn't have the right to talk about their spouse, which they've only had the right to even marry for eight years. Oh, and if you were a straight person of historical or societal significance, you'd have the right for your biography to be taught in Florida schools. A luxury that is not shared by members of the LGBTQ community. And if a student is having, you know, relationship problems or home life problems, it's something that they could talk about with their teacher or guidance counselor. Unless, of course, you're an LGBTQ student, uh, then you don't have that right. And these things also limit the First Amendment rights of LGBTQ people, both teachers and students, something that you wouldn't have to worry about. Oh, and then as a straight person, you have the right to get gender-affirming care at any age. Circumcision, nose job, boob job, no age limits, no restrictions. Rights trans people don't share currently in 18 states. And that's just a handful of laws currently on the books. That doesn't count the well over 400 laws introduced this year alone targeting LGBTQ rights. Now we cleared that up, Rolf. Was there anything else? It's just like systemic racism. <laughs> Is it now? Well, please enlighten us, Admiral General Aladdin. Name, give me an example, a concrete, factual, tangible example of systemic racism. If I would be talking about some people don't have some rights, I should be able to list those rights like that. Oh, so you'd like tangible, factual examples of systemic racism. Well, buckle up, buttercup. Black drivers are 20% more likely to be stopped by police and twice as likely to be searched than white drivers. Black people are five times more likely to be arrested than white people. Black youths are four times more likely to be detained or sent to juvenile detention centers than their white peers. Once arrested and convicted, they are 20% more likely to serve longer sentences than white people with the same criminal history arrested for the same crime. And black people on average serve 10% longer sentences than white people for the same crime with the same criminal history history. Black people are also seven and a half times more likely to be wrongly convicted of murder. And despite making up 6% of our total population, black men make up 33% of our prison population. And a lot of this racial disparity in our judicial system can be directly traced back to black codes, which were laws specifically targeted at black people after slavery to get them arrested and convicted so they could be put back into slavery through the penal system. Oh, and they're arrested by cops and our modern police force was derived from slave catchers. And I guess not much has changed because we have a for-profit prison system, the largest prison population in the entire world by a lot, and that prison population is made up primarily of minorities who are forced to do unpaid or slave wage labor. Or how about employment? Black people with white sounding names are 50% more likely to receive callbacks from job applications, and college educated black people have exponentially lower lifetime economic achievement and income over their college educated white peers. Then we're all familiar with the gender pay gap where white women earn 80 cents on the dollar on average compared to white men doing the same job. On average, black men earn 71 cents on the dollar, black women earn 63 cents on the dollar, and Hispanic women earn 58 cents on the dollar. Oh, and then home ownership, which is the pillar of generational wealth, has long been denied to the black community. Redlining, formalized in the 1930s, literally denied mortgages to black people in certain areas for decades, which put them decades behind on building generational wealth for their children and grandchildren. Even to this day, black people are more likely to not receive a call back from real estate agents and are more likely to receive recommendations for subprime loans from banks, even when they qualify for prime loans. This all translates to 30% lower ownership rates among black households over their white counterparts. And then you're an immigrant. You know, if you talk about it a lot and put it in your handle in case anybody fucking missed it. Ever wonder why you get to be here and not worry about getting deported? I'm sure you think it has everything to do with your own merit and nothing to do with the fact that the only way that people could tell us apart is that one of us sounds like Flula Borg. And I can assure you it's not. You have benefited from a long history of a U.S. immigration policy that favors people who look like you and targets people who are a little more brown or eyes are a little less round. See, until the 1970s, it was primarily people who looked like you unlawfully immigrating to the United States. There was no restrictions on immigrants accessing public benefits until the 1970s and you could 
legally hire undocumented immigrants until 1986. All things that change as the melanin of our immigrant populations change. This goes back to uh, generational wealth and privilege that white undocumented immigrants got to build that brown immigrants today do not. Also, brown immigrants are much more likely to be profiled, targeted, apprehended, prosecuted, and then jailed or deported over their white counterparts. And undocumented immigrants who are unlawfully here because they overstay their visa and thus are much more likely to be white uh, have a much higher chance of getting permanent residence here in the United States versus those people who came over illegally across the border. Was that listing them off? like that enough for you. Now look, we home grow enough of our own bigoted assholes, so we don't really need to be importing them. So do us all a favor and, you know, get a better take. Maybe just have a little bit more compassion and empathy for all the people who aren't afforded all the privileges that you get to enjoy.